As the AI race continues globally, China are stepping up their construction of data centers, but Xi Jinping is not looking to build them in Beijing or Shanghai or Shenzhen. He's planning billions of dollars in building dozens of data centers thousands of miles away in the middle of the desert. Once fully built, this data center hub will power China's AI development for decades. But what's interesting is the tech they've announced they'll be putting inside. Thousands of Nvidia's H100 chips, chips that the US has banned from going to China. So what's going on here? Have China found a way to smuggle Nvidia's best chips into the heart of their AI operation? Based on my data analysis and data sourcing, I found that China is building huge data centers in Xinjiang. The data center will use Nvidia servers and chips. According to Bloomberg, local government documents in the Xinjiang region have shown that at least 39 new data centers have been greenlit for construction, but the chips within them seem to be coming straight from Jensen Huang's top manufacturing lines. Yes, these planning documents show that over 100,000 banned NVIDIA H100 chips are set to be used to power China's AI revolution, something that under America's laws shouldn't be happening. The H100 Hopper chip has been NVIDIA's flagship model for AI development. This is the chip that is being used by all the top players in AI. Hundreds of thousands of chips being bought by companies like Microsoft, Meta, Google, Tesla, Amazon. And it's also the chip that has powered much of NVIDIA's earnings growth and subsequently the astronomical rise in their share price. But it doesn't just stop with the American tech giants. Due to the exceptional power of these advanced AI chips, Companies from all over the world have been sending in orders for the H100s, a trend that the US government a few years ago found a touch concerning. Because of the potential military uses these advanced AI chips could have, the US government is worried that if a lot of these ultra powerful chips go to adversarial countries, the US may end up being on the receiving end of their power. Now, because of this, in October 2022, the Biden administration took the step to officially curb China's access to advanced semiconductor technology. They did this through export controls, which banned the sale of NVIDIA's A100 and H100 to both China and Russia. They also blocked the export of critical tools, software, and even US talent from supporting the development of China's most advanced semiconductor facilities. At the time, this ban was framed as a matter of national security, and while there has been some walkback on these export controls under the Trump administration, the ban on Nvidia's H100 chips still holds firm. Now, as you can imagine, there was one big loser beyond China from these export controls, and that is, of course, Nvidia. China was set to be a massive market for H100 sales, but with export controls in place, Jensen Huang had to change strategy. This led to the H20 chip being born. Now this new chip, still based on Nvidia's Hopper architecture, was designed to output between one quarter and one third of the performance of the H100, but crucially, the specifications fell just within the thresholds for them to be exported to China. This new system meant that Nvidia could still sell to China, but China would always be kept one generation behind on AI hardware. Initially, it looked like that strategy would work, but then things took another turn. In October 2023, the US tightened its export controls even further, expanding the restrictions to cover not just individual chips, but entire GPU systems and AI clusters. Ultimately, Nvidia's export license was effectively revoked, leaving the company with billions of dollars in unsellable inventory and forced to write off a staggering 5.5 billion in unsold chips. Now, we have seen this partially reversed as of July 2025, but the damage may already be done because now it seems like China, instead of working within the US restrictions with Nvidia and their H20 chips, have simply found a way to source H100 chips outside official sales channels from Nvidia. And they're not even pretending to be quiet about it. As I noted before, official planning documents coming out of local governments in the Xinjiang region have straight up listed the H100 as the chip to be installed at these facilities under construction. The documents note that over 115,000 restricted H100 chips are set to become the brain of this region. But the question on everybody's lips, how are they getting them? Well, there are three possible explanations. And the first is, well, they're not, that this is just one big bluff. These are, after all, plans for development. Many of these buildings haven't even started construction yet, so it remains to be seen if China 
really does have large scale access to these chips they say they're installing. There's no explanation in the official documents of how companies plan to acquire the banned NVIDIA chips, and it could all be aspirational. In a response from NVIDIA, the company said that posting a web page about restricted products is not the same as successfully licensing, building, and operating a data center, and that NVIDIA does not provide any support or repairs for restricted products. But another question that is genuinely being asked at the moment is whether H100 chips are being smuggled into China from outside sources, i.e. ordered to one country with no export controls and then quietly shipped into China. And this could potentially play a factor. The Financial Times recently reported that at least $1 billion worth of Nvidia's advanced artificial intelligence processes were shipped to China in the three months after Donald Trump tightened chip export controls, exposing the limits of Washington's efforts to restrain Beijing's high-tech ambitions. And the scarier thing about this article is that it seems they're not even going after the H100s anymore. It is in fact the H100's successor, the B200, that is the chip of choice in the Chinese black market at the current time. This chip, which is roughly five times faster than the H100, is designed to support next generation AI infrastructure in hyperscale data centers, ultimately delivering up to 30 times faster inference at a much larger scale and significantly lower cost. This chip is already widely used by the US AI powerhouses, the OpenAIs, the Googles, the Metas, to train their latest AI systems. But like the H100, the B200 is definitely banned for direct export to China. But that doesn't seem to be stopping them. The Financial Times noted in their article that in May, multiple Chinese distributors started selling B200s to suppliers of data centers that serve Chinese AI groups, which is kind of crazy because this came closely after the Trump administration moved to prevent sales of the H20, the vastly less powerful Nvidia chip that Jensen Huang and his team designed to comply with Joe Biden era restrictions. It's kind of like drugs, making them illegal doesn't stop them from going around. And according to contracts reviewed by the Financial Times and people they say have knowledge of the transactions, the total sales during this period are estimated to be more than $1 billion. Although despite a black market seemingly developing for Nvidia's chips throughout China, at least according to Jensen Huang, Nvidia's CEO, this may not be quite the threat it sounds like. In fact, in his view, smuggled chips will not form a large part of China's new data centers. Why? A few reasons. This is what he said. Governments understand that diversion is not allowed, and there's no evidence of any AI uh, chip diversion. Now recognize our data center GPUs are massive. These are massive systems. The Grace Blackwell system is nearly two tons. And so you're not gonna be uh, ship, you're not going to be putting that in your pocket or your backpack anytime soon. And so these systems are fairly easy to keep track of. And, um, and But the important thing is that the countries and the companies that we sell to recognize that diversion is not allowed. The main point there being that sure, some of Nvidia's units might slip through the cracks, but to smuggle that amount of product, at least in Jensen's eyes, is not very feasible and also not worth the risk of those redirecting the goods. Nvidia also added in a further statement that quote, trying to cobble together data centers from smuggled products is a losing proposition both technically and economically. Data centers require service and support, which we provide only to authorized Nvidia products. So perhaps filling these data centers with smuggled Nvidia hardware is a less likely solution than it first seems, but that doesn't change the fact that China are still building, right? Xi Jinping hasn't paused the construction of these data centers, so there must be some plan that the world doesn't know about. Buildings continue to go up, and it doesn't seem like these are ghost buildings, because on top of the data centers themselves, massive solar and wind farms, which will be needed to power the energy-hungry data centers, have already been built in the area. Chinese companies sometimes have a pattern of pursuing the start of infrastructure projects that are not ultimately completed. But you also have to take seriously that these documents say that they want to do this and that the construction is happening in a region that has a lot of the other resources and infrastructure necessary to support an AI data center build out. So what's the plan? Well, I guess the final option that could be true is that the listed H100 installation is 
more of a benchmark or specification for these data centers rather than official inventory. And the hope is that once these data centers have been constructed, China will have designed a homegrown chip with similar capabilities that can then be utilized as the backbone of the Chinese AI future. Now, this may very well be the case, and it makes sense from a strategic standpoint as well. Ensuring your country's future in the AI race is not dependent on any other country. And this has also been a topic discussed by Jensen Huang recently. Speaking to reporters at the Computex Taipei Tech Conference, Huang actually went so far as to say that Chinese tech companies have ultimately benefited from the export controls placed by America. He noted that the export controls gave them the spirit, the energy, and the government support to accelerate their development. So I think all in all, the export control is a failure. The China market is of course very large, but it's also the home of 50% of the world's AI researchers. The platform that succeeds is the platform with the most developers. iPhone successful because of lots of developers, Windows successful because of lots of developers. All these platforms succeed because there are a lot of developers. China is home to 50% of the AI researchers in the world. And so we want the world to build on American technology stack. We want every developer in the world to prefer the American technology stacks. Once that happens, developers develop on American technology stacks. American technology stacks will run AI the best all over the world. That's probably the most important strategic reason to be in China because there are so many developers there and because the world is gonna adopt technology from one country or another and we prefer it to be the American technology stack. And with so many AI researchers based in China but now restrictions in place to prevent these researchers from accessing NVIDIA technology, Jensen's fear is that America ultimately spurs China into action, where they come up with their own more powerful homegrown chips as time goes by. Will China be able to acquire the computer chips that AI development demands? And will China be able to make those chips itself rather than relying on a US company like NVIDIA? What we found in Xinjiang and Qinghai for these scale of data center development shows that Beijing is trying very hard to nurture its own domestic AI industry so that they can match the tech giants from the West. But despite that being the case, at least for the moment, it doesn't look like China can quite match Nvidia's latest chips. You know, while they definitely surprised the world with their DeepSeek AI platform, this was reportedly developed with old, outdated Nvidia hardware. And it seems that, at least for now, the most advanced AI chips coming out of China are caught at least one generation behind Nvidia's latest chips. One Nvidia's H100 chips can achieve maybe three to four times more of the computing power from the local design chips. By Huawei's own account and that of several US government officials, the best Chinese chip, the Huawei Ascend series, is still at least a generation behind. So while China goes through this period of catch up developing their own AI industry to rival America, this keeps Nvidia's chips in high demand on the black market. So what's really happening out there in the desert? Well, it might end up being a moot point. Yes, the export restrictions make for a fascinating story about how China might be sourcing banned H100 chips, but as Jensen Huang himself has pointed out, that might not be the story that truly matters. While these restrictions have limited China's access to cutting edge hardware today, the bigger risk is what happens next. Because this short term roadblock could turn into long term fuel, accelerating the development of China's domestic AI and semiconductor industries. And in the worst case scenario, it may even strengthen China's resolve to take control of the chip making capital of the world, Taiwan. So let me know your take on the export controls down in the comments below. Are you for the restriction? Or do you sit more in Jensen Huang's camp where you feel the restrictions may lead to an eventual loss in America's AI dominance? Also, one more thing before I sign off, if you're interested in joining myself and my investing mentor, Phil Town, for a free three-day investing workshop in Atlanta this September, please check out the links in the description and pin comment below. Spots are really starting to fill up now. So if you're keen to come, we would love to see you there, but book a ticket, get your flights and accommodation sorted, confirm with the Rule 1 team just to make sure you actually get in. Apart from that, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.